Today we will be talking about the proximity internal integration in Home Assistant and why this is one of the best integrations you should use, no matter if you will be using it just to keep your lights turned off or if you want to automate your heating system. So stick around and in a couple of seconds we will be talking about the proximity integration of Home Assistant. Proximity integration has been introduced to Home Assistant really long, long, long time ago. But unfortunately, not a lot of people are using it. While the documentation does say that the heating system or heating or cooling system is one of the best cases, you can also use it to automate other tasks. For example, you can use it to automate your alarm system if you have one connected to Home Assistant and to trigger it if you forget to trigger it when you leave home. Of course, this system, like most of the device trackers or systems that are tracking your location, isn't perfect, so don't rely just on it. Today, we will be enabling this integration inside Home Assistant and we will be seeing how we can use it in our automations. First things first is how do you add this integration? Unfortunately, you do have to add it in your YAML files. There is one prerequisite and that one prerequisite is that you already have your zone set up. In my setup, I already have three zones set up, but we can use only two of them. The one that is called ISS tracking is really the space where I want to see if ISS is visible or not, so it covers half of the Europe. So no, we are not going to use that. Instead, we are going to use this home zone that I created when I installed Home Assistant and this one that I just created for the purpose of this video. Proximity entity, which we will create in a couple of seconds, can give you a couple of values. First of all, it's state. State will give you number in, for example, kilometers from the zone. So if, for example, you have a couple of people, it will give you the location or the distance between the closest one to the zone you are monitoring. Then we have direction of travel. Direction of travel has also a couple of states. They are not set, arrived, towards, away from, unknown and stationary. And you can of course use those values to trigger specific automations. For example, in the case of heating, when it is moving away from home and the distance is, for example, more than one kilometer, set heating to off or lower temperature. The next values is unit of measurement. And that can be miles, kilometers, meters, yards, and feet. And there is a last value we can receive from proximity entity, and that is the nearest person or device. If you, for example, are monitoring multiple persons or multiple devices, this nearest will give you the information about what person or device is closest to the zone you're monitoring. And then you can correlate it with state and see this nearest person, for example, me, is only one kilometer from zone that is monitored. Let's start adding it in Home Assistant. For this, we have to go to either File Editor, Visual Studio Code, or whatever editor you are using to edit your YAML files. Let me check if I already have proximity enabled here or not. No, I don't have it. I only have proxies. Then at the bottom of the file, once again, I will be adding comment and we will start to configure proximity integration. For this, you need to know the name of the zone. If you do not know names of your zones, you can get them from the developer tools and type here zone. And you will see that I have zone.iss underscore tracking underscore zone. And as I said, I cannot or I will not be using this one. But I have two other zones. One is zone.home, which is the location of home assistant or your system. And the other one is zone.creation underscore radio underscore television, which when I think of it, I could have used some abbreviation, not this long name. Okay, let's go back to Visual Studio Code. First, we need to enable integration. And that's simple. We just have to type proximity column. Then we have to specify the zone names or the zones that we want to monitor. And in my case, I have two zones, home, and later on, I will create additional tracker for the other zone. One thing, for example, that you can add here, which I will not be add because I only have two zones, not more, is the zone that you want to ignore when you are tracking that zone. For example, this can be your work. You would do this by typing ignore, zone, zone, and here a list all the zones that you don't want to track. <laughs> Let me try to explain what this is. So for example, we have home zone and we want to track every person or device in our household in correlation to that zone. 
but also we don't want to track them if they are inside the school zone or inside the work zone. Those zones can, for example, be places where your family members are spending a lot of time. If we would track school or work, we would have a stationary person in that object and this proximity sensor wouldn't change. Because they are at a zone itself, we want to ignore everybody who is in some other zone. And in that case, you would type here ignore zone and list all the zones you want to ignore. If, for example, you have other zones such as parents' house, your shops, cinema, restaurants, whatever, and those zones are somewhere where you spend just a short amount of time, those zones, for example, you wouldn't ignore. Next, you have to list all device trackers. And device trackers can be either devices themselves or they can be person. If you do not know the names of device trackers or persons, once again, we can go to developer tools, type here device tracker and see all the device trackers in your home. For example, I will type here device tracker dot keys. But let's also see what person we have. I'm unfortunately the only person in this recording setup, so I will type in my mistype name. As I said, I want to track device tracker dot keys and person dot mistyped bearded tinker. I did already mention we have something called tolerance, and now we will be configuring tolerance. What is tolerance? Tolerance is a distance in meters, for example, in this case, and also in documentation, it is 50 meters, where we are ignoring small movements. If, for example, you are working at your office or you are at your home, you do not want to get triggered if you walk around your apartment or very large house. So that's why we have tolerance. 50. And the last thing that we want to specify here is unit of measurement. As I previously mentioned, we can use kilometers, meters, miles, yards, and feet. I will be using kilometers. Disable ignore zone because, as I mentioned, I will not be ignoring anything as I do not have additional zones here. Now we have created proximity for our main home zone. This proximity zone will be called zone and we didn't specify the zone name because the default one is always pulling data for your home zone. If you want to create additional zones, besides just giving it a name, you should also tell the system what zone you want to monitor. So for example, if I want to create new zone called HRT, which is short for Croatian Radio Television and I got smarter and I will be using shorter name. Then we have to specify here the zone name that is attached or this proximity sensor is monitoring this zone. And in my case, unfortunately, it's creation radio television. The rest of the configuration can be the same or similar or depending on how you want to configure it, a different one. For example, you do not have to specify same trackers. Here, I will only specify person, bearded thinker, and I will skip out the device tracker. Tolerance will be the same, and for this proximity sensor, I will be leaving out the unit of measurement. Or, if you want, you can change it to something else. For example, put here meters instead of kilometers. Good practice is to add one empty line and remove all the unnecessary spaces. And of course, check your configuration, which, if you do not remember, now is in developer tools, YAML, Check configuration. And if everything is OK, we should restart our Home Assistant. And once again, in the version 2022.5 or newer, you have restart here. But we also have it in a settings system panel where you can press restart. While the system is restarting, I want to give a big shout out to everybody who is supporting me on the YouTube channel and has become a YouTube channel member. Thank you all for all of your support, but also thanks to everybody who watched, liked or subscribed to my channel. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below. And of course, if you did like this video so far, please give me a like. It not just means a lot to me, but it also helps with the YouTube algorithms. After system has restarted in developer tools, let's search for proximity entities. We now have Proximity Home and Proximity Creation Radio Television. If we click on Proximity Home, 
we will get information that direction of travel has arrived, meaning that I am at that location. The nearest person is the person being the thinker. Unit of measurement is kilometers. If I search for proximity HRT, I can see that the state is currently two, meaning that the nearest person, which in this case is once again be the thinker, is two kilometers away from the HRT or creation television. So how do you implement it inside your home assistant? It all depends on your use case, but let's look at one of the possible scenarios. Let's go to states, automations, let's create new automation, empty one, Let's call it turn heating off when away. For the trigger, I will be using numeric state. Entity will be proximity home. And when it's above one kilometer for testing purposes only. This means that this automation turn heating off when away will be triggered if a person has left home and is one or above kilometers from your home zone. Of course, to further improve your automation, you could add condition that would check if the person is moving away or towards the zone. In my case, I will be skipping it. And in devices, I have selected Zeta room and I will change this to off and save. Now, if this automation would run, what it would do is it would check if the numeric state for the proximity to zone home is one or above kilometer. If you put in condition, it would check that condition and then it would set the heating to off for Zeta room. There are a couple of things that you can do to further improve, but I think that this is also overcomplicating. For example, let's say that you have two people and that you are tracking two persons. What you could do is create individual proximity sensors to each of the zones. It would complicate because you would have to repeat for each and every zone this zone setup for each person. For example, I want to track my distance to zone and no matter where I am, I also want to track my wife's distance from that zone. I would need to create two new proximity sensors. One would be called me home, but since the system doesn't know what zone I want to take for reference, I would type here zone home. Then of course, I would need to specify device or devices that are associated with me. In my case, once again, it will be just person beard thinker. Tolerance would be 50. And then, for that same home zone, if I want to track each and every person and its distance to a specific zone, I would create a new sensor. For my wife, this would be wife, home, zone once again would be home, devices, person, not bearded thinker, because yeah, she doesn't have beard, and tolerance, 50. And for example, for kids, you would specify each and every kid and each and every zone. That way you will not be receiving the nearest person because the nearest person would always be the same. And it can be beneficial for some automations, but just think of it. If you, for example, have three, four, five people living in your household and you want to monitor three zones, you would have at least 15 proximity sensors. So that can be a bit overwhelming. That way, I really do recommend that you stick with the, I would say, intended way of creating the sensors. Let me remove this from this file. For the end, as I mentioned, nope, nope, this is still not the end of the video. After editing everything and talking to some people, I decided to include two additional information. First of all, in the future, and who knows when that future will be, there may be a change to proximity sensor. It will still be included into Home Assistant, but there may be some naming changes. So all of your automations that you create now should still work in the future, but maybe you will need to change the name of the sensor. And the second thing is that in the description of the video, I will be leaving you a link to my GitHub repository. And if we go to automations, locations, I have created four automations that work with proximity. This automation is checking if anybody is arriving home. We are looking at the numeric state platform, at the proximity home, which is proximity sensor for the home zone, 
and if it falls below 200, and yes, this is 200 meters, not 200 kilometers, so you have to change unit of measurement to meters. It will also check against the condition or against the template if the person is traveling towards or away from this zone. It will then run my standard notification script and also say a message that looks like nearest person's name is almost home. Same or similar automation is for this one here. It is checking if anybody is approaching Creation Radio Television and it will then tell you the name of the person who is approaching. Then I have two additional and they are working on moving away from zone. So for example, office. If we look at the office, we can see that it will notify me when I leave office or notify anybody when I leave the office. Once again, numeric state for the proximity office, which once again is tied to the zone office. If it goes above 100 meters, and yes, I've changed all my proximity sensors to be measuring meters instead of kilometers. Zagreb is a very small city, so yeah. Once again, we are checking the template. State, proximity, office, attributes, direction of travel is away from. So we are increasing the number from 100 up, and also we are checking if it's moving away from. Then it would once again run the script saying that looks like name of the person that is nearest has left the office. And also push that notification to Google speakers or text to speech. I know that still these automations are very simple, but I also wanted to provide you with sample codes where we are checking also additional conditions. So you can take this code and adapt to your own needs. Of course, you can play here with services and use this for heating to either turn it on or turn it off, depending if person is approaching or moving away from the zone you are tracking. This video is not part of the energy challenge, but this video is really great addition for energy challenge that Automate Your Life has created together with If This Then That. If you haven't already checked it out, don't forget to check the energy challenge playlist where 21 videos are already located from 20 different YouTube creators. If you did like this video, please give me a thumb up. If you still haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified on the future video releases and of course the streams. I always try to have at least one stream every 14 days. If you have any kind of a comment or a question, you can always leave comment down in a comment section below, but of course you are free to go to the Discord server and the link to Discord server is in the description of the video and we can have a chat there. And I will be seeing you next time. Until then, bye-bye and have fun.